So Michelle, high blood pressure. Um, so I'll talk about weight for a little bit. I'm gonna why the I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about this. Is anybody on Ozempic though? If anybody's on Ozempic, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about that as well. But if no one's on it, I'm gonna skip it. So let me know if you want if you are on it. If you want me to talk about um, some information on Ozempic. My qualifications, guys. My background is neuroscience, so all uh, neurons in the body and behavior, so brain and body. Okay, so we do have some people with Ozempic, um, neuropathy, JB. Michelle, hello. Okay. Okay. Okay, metformin. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about Ozempic then. <laughs> Thank you, user48. I appreciate that. Um, Valerie, what does your doctor want you on? Was it Ozempic? Okay. Okay, I'll talk about Ozempic. Um, I'll, I'm going to talk about weight and then I'll talk about Ozempic. I'm going to go into that for a little bit, just a little. I like to share a little bit of information about it, just so you guys are aware of something that a lot of doctors don't understand about it or that they don't educate on before the person goes on it. Um, and it's all fixable. Everything I talk about is all fixable. So weight. I like to talk about this one because it's one of the biggest symptoms people struggle with when it comes to insulin resistance. And it can often be one of the most upsetting things because oftentimes people come to me and they, uh, <laughs> Q Banks, thank you. They will come to me and one of their biggest pain points is they're going to the gym all the time and they're eating healthy. They're doing everything they can think of and they can't lose weight. They're gaining weight. If Maybe they're gaining weight even though they're doing all of that, but they're especially not losing weight. Maybe they lost a little bit of weight and then they're plateauing and they're not going any further. And that can be really upsetting. Of course, they're trying really hard. So I like to explain this piece. And so butterfly, this sounds like you. Okay, um, so I'm gonna explain why this is and why it's not your fault. Insulin is a very, very, very powerful hormone. So your body, so Laura, you as well. Okay, so I'll explain this in detail. Your body can get, yep, so user 558, you as well. Okay, um, neuropathy, Anna, I'll talk about neuropathy if you want as well. Um, okay, Sylvia as well. So your body can get energy from two sources, from your food, which is glucose, right? So food goes into your body, it's converted into glucose. Your body can get energy from glucose or from body fat from burning body fat. Even a lean person has about a hundred times more energy stored as body fat than they do have glucose. And it's very healthy for the body to use that. It's good for the brain, it's good for the organs, it's very healthy. In a healthy individual, the body's supposed to switch back and forth from getting energy from food to getting energy from body fat, food, body fat. When you're eating, it's supposed to be using the food. When you're not eating, it's supposed to switch over and use the body fat. And what tells it to switch Carrie, you as well. Okay, so um, Glenn, oh Glenn, I'm sorry. If you want, you can message me and I will chat with you one-on-one -on -one to catch you up on anything that you're missing. Um, okay, so the body switches back and forth between those two energy sources. Now what tells the body to go back and forth is insulin. No surprise, insulin is the key thing and everything at this point in this life. Insulin is the key hormone telling the body when to use food and when to use body fat. And this is how it works. So glucose again and insulin again, like the beginning, the first demonstration I did. So when you, um, okay, so when you guys are not eating, when you have no food in the tank, the tank is empty. You have no food in there. No food, I mean, no glucose is in there. So no glucose, insulin is low, glucose is low. When insulin is low, it's telling the brain, okay, there is no food in the tank. The tank is empty. There's no glucose for you to eat, but you need energy. If you remember from the beginning, I said there are 37 billion trillion biochemical reactions happening in the body every single second. 37 billion trillion biochemical reactions every single second. The body constantly needs energy. So even when you're not eating, hi, Honey J, welcome. Guys, Honey J is one of my customers. Michelle is here. One of my customers are both starting the system this week, so they're going to be learning a lot in this live. Um, okay, so or was I? Insulin is low, it's telling the body there's no food in the tank, but you always need energy, but there's no food, you need energy, burn fat for energy. So stop looking for food, tap into your body stores and burn fat for energy. So the brain says, okay, and it switches over and starts to burn fat for energy. And then let's say you eat. So you eat and glucose goes up. And then when glucose goes up, insulin goes up. When insulin goes up, insulin signals to the body, okay, there's food in the tank. So leave the body fat alone, leave it alone, leave it over there, leave it for later. Stop burning body fat, start burning the glucose. Use the glucose for food. So the body will start to use the glucose and the glucose goes down. And then when glucose is down, insulin will eventually come down 
And that tells the body, okay, food's gone, switch back over to body fat. So you guys can see that the body is switching and it's insulin that is telling the body to switch back and forth. Now, let's say you're insulin resistant. Um, guys, there's a lot of people asking questions. I will cover those questions, but I'm just gonna get through this little piece for those who are, um, who are asking me to cover this. So insulin is telling the body to switch back and forth. But if you're insulin resistant, so your insulin is stuck chronically elevated, right? It's not going back down. And if insulin isn't going back down, that means it is always telling the brain one signal. And that one signal is never burn body fat, never burn body fat, never burn body fat, only burn food for energy, only burn food for energy. Any extra calories that you don't eat go to body fat and your body can't tap into it because it's being told not to. Let's say now that you create a calorie deficit. Let's say for those of you who are going to <laughs> Q Banks, thank you. Those of you who are going to the gym every single day, a lot of people that I work with on for reversing insulin resistance, they go to the gym every single day and they're going there for an hour. They're eating really healthy. Let's say you're creating a calorie deficit of 200 calories. Let's say you created a calorie deficit of 200 calories. Um, with type one, type one. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about type one in, in a second here. So let's say you create a deficit of 200 calories. Your body is still being told it can't burn body fat. So even though you created a deficit, it cannot listen to that and burn body fat for you. So what's it going to do? Because insulin is really, really powerful. So now it's telling your body, even though there's a deficit, you can't touch that fat. So the body has to listen to the insulin and what it's going to do. It's going to slow down. Your body's going to slow down its energy input output. It's going to slow down your metabolism. It's going to slow down your body. And as it does that, it's going to match the energy deficit. So you don't lose weight. 